I've reviewed over 60 cars this year and only one Ford, but it might be the best Ford on the market. And that is the Ford Maverick hybrid, newly refreshed for 2025. And it's right up there with the Camry LE, in my opinion, for the two best vehicles for the general audience. If you need a truck and get the Maverick, unless you're doing some heavy lifting, but Ford is not stopping with the greatness of the Maverick. No, no, no. They have just shared their $5 billion investment on a new pickup truck, but that's just the first fruit of their new assembly line process and their new platform with software defined vehicles. We will have affordable EVs from Ford, not, you know, $80,000, you know, lightning pickup trucks or more expensive Mach E's. No, th this is going to be a modular platform that can make many different models for less money and they can make them quicker using less parts, less labor, less materials with affordable batteries. Guys, if you're excited for Ford's breakout moment as an EV manufacturer, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe for more. And I got my fingers crossed. If they can bake that magic that's in the Maverick into this new pickup truck and other vehicles on this new platform and keep it at a low cost, Ford could be uh, primed and ready to essentially take over for Tesla. Tesla is floundering right now for lots of different reasons. A lack of fresh product is a big part of it besides the political stuff. Ford could absolutely be the, te the next Tesla, all right? And I think customers would be, or at least people outside looking into EVs would be more interested in buying maybe a Ford EV than a Tesla. But but it's time to go ahead and get into the details of Ford's big investment with this new platform. So the platform reduces parts by 20% versus a typical gas car. You have 25% fewer fasteners, 40% fewer workstation dock to dock in the plant and 15% is a uh, faster assembly line. They're also expecting the cost of ownership over five years is going to be less than a used Tesla. That's pretty fantastic if they can pull that off. They say that the wiring harness in this new midsize truck will be more than 4,000 feet shorter, over a kilometer shorter and 10 kg, so 22 pounds lighter than the one used in their first gen electric SUV. I don't know what they're referring to. If they're referring to the Mach-E, maybe. They're also using lithium ion phosphate batteries. They don't use cobalt, they don't use nickel, which cobalt is trickier to get your hands on. There are less places in the world. It's very politically charged as well. It's also uh, a human rights issue with how they obtain cobalt. So. If you can take cobalt out of the situation and still give good range and a performance, then you're going to be fine. And the great thing about LFP batteries is that they reduce cost. You don't always have the best range. The battery also uh, makes up the structural subassembly on the floor. Um, so low center of gravity is essentially a skateboard platform. And I think I find it funny that Ford is saying, hey, there's more passenger room in this new truck coming out in 2027. We'll see if it launches then. Again, anything can be delayed, especially when you're talking about a new platform. They're saying that there's more passenger room than a RAV4. I mean, it's kind of ironic, right, that they're comparing it to a RAV4 in terms of space. Don't they have vehicles within their lineup they can compare to? Oh, well, maybe they don't because they're killing. Well, they killed the Ford Edge. The Ford Escape is getting killed as well. So if they're killing their mid-size crossovers, then they don't have a direct comparison. So that's why they're using a Toyota RAV4 as a guide would be my guess. But there's also going to be a Franc on this truck. And they're saying it's going to be a pretty um, plug and play and flexible truck saying you can lock your surfboards and other gear in the bed and no roof rack or trailer hitch racks required. Now, I haven't seen anything about a mid gate. That would be a game changer if they could get a mid gate in this truck um, to elongate the bed at a moment's notice. They're saying that this new truck will have a zero to 60 as fast as a Mustang EcoBoost. Now Mustang EcoBoost, it's about 310 horsepower um, and you build a lot of torque if you like torque break it or launch these things. They can do zero to 60 under five seconds. Um, so some publications say four and a half seconds, some say about five. It's just gonna, there's, it's probably gonna be the same for this truck. Instead, you're gonna have all wheel drive, something the EcoBoost does not have. Um, so that is going to allow them to put down the power a little bit better. So zero to 60, I would say five seconds at the minimum for 
the top spec. All right, you're probably going to have a rear wheel, rear wheel drive variant of this truck that's going to have maybe 200 horsepower instead of 300 horsepower or 300 plus horsepower in the dual motor. So if you have 200 horsepower rear wheel drive, zero to 60 on it, it's probably going to be about seven seconds would be my guess. Five to seven seconds, zero to 60, I think is a conservative uh, number for this pickup truck. It's going to be fast. They say it's going to have more downforce than a Mustang EcoBoost. Uh, when I hear downforce, I think low to the ground. Uh, if you're not using a big wing or something like that. So this truck is going to be a, more of a city truck would be my guess. You better believe that they will have off-road tremor, you know, variants of this truck in the future. But I'm assuming the base model that they're talking about here with more downforce, low to the ground, low center of gravity with the battery pack, all that stuff. Uh, and low, low center of gravity and low um, ride height for good range. Now, Ford doesn't have any range numbers for us on this model. They have no charging numbers. They have no pricing. We have to wait probably two years to get any sort of that information. So they're building this truck in a new assembly line in Louisville. And the, the batteries are coming from, I believe, their, their uh, LFP plant in Michigan. Yeah, Blue Oval Battery Park, Michigan. Um, and then Louisville, Kentucky is where they're uh, adding or securing 4,000 jobs, I should say. Creating or securing 4,000 jobs at Louisville assembly plant. So back to the assembly line, they're calling it an assembly tree. So the, the three different parts of the truck or the vehicle, regardless of whether it's a truck or three-row SUV or whatever they're making on this platform, they're built um, in three different lines concurrently instead of a, a very serial process. It's more of a parallel process. And then they combine the three finished parts at the end. And that's how they can make the production line uh, about 15% faster, use less parts, use less X, Y, and Z. It's just a more efficient process. They're also using single piece aluminum unicastings replacing dozens of smaller parts, enabling the front and rear of the vehicle to be assembled separately. So when I hear this, I think of Toyota, sorry, Toyota's doing it uh, in the near future, but obviously Tesla and a lot of other Chinese automakers, they are mega casting, giga casting, large pieces of the vehicle. And that reduces a lot of assembly time. It reduces a lot of parts and a lot of cost. Honda's doing it with the, um, the castings of the battery on their zero series EVs. Now they're saying that in best case scenario, this Ford Universal EV production system and platform can allow the midsize pickup truck be assembled to be assembled about 40% faster than current vehicles at the Louisville assembly plant. Now, however, they're saying it will only end up being a 15% speed improvement because they will be reinvesting that extra, I guess you could say 25% of that time, extra time that they have um, to insourcing and automation to improve quality and cost. All right. So maybe over time they can get closer to that 40%, but initially um, it'll be 15%. So when I want to show the images that I took from the GIF or the GIF file that they, um, they included in the press pack here. This is just a rough outline of what kind of vehicles they can make. I think I counted uh, seven different vehicles that they could be planning to make, or they're saying essentially that the platform can support a myriad of different vehicle sizes and types. We know Ford does trucks well, so they're starting with this midsize pickup truck. Think of it as probably Ranger size, um, except it's going to have better internal space than a Ranger, like a RAV4 for example. All right. So this is our, maybe our first look at the pickup truck, but again, it's just very general, very general. All right. So let's move on to the next image, kind of like a Ford edge looking thing, like a two row midsize crossover. All right. So they're killing the Ford edge where they killed the Ford edge. They killed um, the escape. So maybe this is going to be a replacement for the escape. The outline looks really ugly, but it is what it is. You guys know I'm a big fan of vans. So they have a van here. Uh, one of two vans that they show with these side profile images. This is a commercial van, obviously, because uh, there's just one row of seats there, and then the rest would be for cargo uh, delivering packages. Here's more of a Mustang Mach E sort of vehicle. Um, you know, more than likely wouldn't have the same performance as a Mustang Mach E due to the battery chemistry. They could always change battery chemistries 
as well. But hey, zero to 60 under five seconds is, is as fast as anyone needs to go. Uh, so yeah, a little coupe crossover thing. And then you have an even smaller one. So this is a midsize. And then you have a smaller coupe crossover, which would be something like, what does Ford currently have? Like a Bronco Sport, but obviously it's not the same sort of uh, design as a Bronco Sport, but maybe something like an HRV Corolla Cross sort of EV. I'll let you guys use your imagination there for uh, like subcompact crossover because this is like a midsize crossover compact or subcompact crossover. Then we have a three row EV like an EV9, Ionic 9, like the Volvo EX90 that I just drove. Check out that review. It's not, a, it's not a very good vehicle. The bar isn't Volvo's EX90, which is very flawed. The bar is the, the Korean three-row EVs, uh, which are absolutely fantastic. They could do it. They can absolutely go to town there. Uh, and then we have the, a passenger variant of that same van. So really, it's not uh, seven vehicles, more like just six vehicles that they've teased here on this universal platform. So not sure which vehicles would ever come to the market. All we know at this point in time is the pickup truck is coming. Now, one big thing I forgot to talk about is pricing. We don't know exact pricing, but they were saying of about $30,000. I mean, with car prices two years out in advance minimum, again, if it's not delayed, Assuming it comes in 2027, who knows if it's going to be $30,000. When these vehicles launch, typically they come out with like a higher spec, like look at Tesla. You know, they said that the uh, Cybertruck is going to be 40 k and they launched it with $100,000 options, right? And there's no 40 k option ever to be seen on that truck unless maybe you're buying it used. So 30 k for starting price for this pickup truck, again, that's more than likely going to be rear wheel drive. I would assume it would just be one battery size um, to make things simple. But again, what kind of battery size? We have no idea. We have no idea on range. I don't think they need to go for 300 miles of range uh, to keep these affordable. I think Slate is a good place to start. I had a reservation on Slate, but since the EV tax credit died uh, or is dying in September, I canceled my reservation um, and I'm just using my old Prius as, as my little property truck right now and it does just fine. But this thing honestly could change the market. But if Ford comes in with a similarly priced truck and it has way more features on the inside and equal to better performance, better range. Again, we don't know exactly the official range on the slate. This is new. I haven't seen this key fob uh, quite yet. I hope the Ford has a, a trunk or a front trunk as big as this. We have 480 volt architecture on the slate for DC fast charging. Now, LFPs, to my recollection, don't charge as fast as NMC batteries, the more expensive batteries that you have in something like a Lightning. And Slate is not using LFP batteries like Ford. So Ford is going to have a cost advantage there, but Slate could have a performance and charging advantage. Here's the deal. I just drove the EX90 and had to stop a couple times or didn't have to stop, but I wanted to stop a couple times at different chargers, uh, like an Electrify America and an LFP, sorry, FPL, Ford, Florida Power and Light uh, fast chargers here uh, this week. And it's just a sucky experience, fast charging your car publicly. That's the thing when you're talking about affordable vehicles and affordable electric cars, you know, DC fast charging might not be very high on the list. All right. Daily performance is really all that matters because you can charge at home. If you can't charge your EV at home, it, like don't buy an EV. Energy prices are so expensive at these public chargers. It'd be way cheaper to just buy a gas car more times than not. And like you would just be printing money if you were in a hybrid, like a Maverick or something compared to fast charging this new pickup truck, who knows what it's going to be called, but 20 to 80% in 30 minutes. Like that's assuming you're getting peak charging rates and charging uh, connectivity and you're getting um, and you don't have to wait in line for your charger and, and it's not too cold. So I have a lot of issues with public charging. It's, you know, if you have to fast charge your EV regularly or if you take it on road trips, no, thank you. It's not the sort of inconvenience I want to in introduce into my life. However, or in and around town, I would love to have something like an ID Buzz with 
maybe a 200 mile, I guess it already has 200 miles of range. It just costs too much. But if Ford can come in with, you know, a small van that can seat six, seven people that gets 200 miles of range and you just charge at home, like that would save me so much gas. It would be fantastic. All right. Let me know what kind of vehicle you would like to see from Ford. Um, what kind of expectations you have? Will they be able to be a better vehicle than Slate? Will it be a price war between the Slate and the new Ford truck? The Ford will be bigger though, and the range might be about the same. The Ford will be less customizable, but you're getting it from an established automaker, and a lot of people would rather do that. However, you would need to buy it from a dealer. And one of the benefits of Slate is you don't have to go through the dealer. All right, so there's just pros and cons to each of them. And I cannot wait to see if this vehicle ever launches this Slate to see comparisons between Ford's new pickup truck and the Slate if they're priced about the same when they both launch. It would be a, an awfully fun comparison between the two. I would like to see 250 miles of range on this truck, but we'll see. We'll see what the public is ready for in terms of range. A lot of people think they need 300 miles of range, but let me tell you more times than not, if you need to have that much range regularly, don't buy an EV, buy something with an internal combustion engine. You'll make your life way simpler. If you mainly just drive in and around town less than 150 miles a day, there's hardly anything. I can't think of anything really better than an EV. So it really depends on your, on your needs until EVs can charge at, um, you know, about five to 10 minutes, it's a hard buy for long range sort of vehicles. So they don't need to have a lot of range on this pickup truck, but Ford might run into the issue of, uh, the, the public thinking that they need a ton of range and an EV, you don't need a lot of range because in an EV, it should be in and around town only in my a personal opinion. I'll see you guys in the comments. I love this idea from Ford. I love the idea of more affordable vehicles. Uh, and I love the idea of this modular platform and a more efficient assembly line. I think it just sounds all good, all great, all gravy, but you know, I'm just, I'm just gobbling up this, you know, very rosy press release from Ford when it comes to the market, who knows what kind of vehicle it's going to be. All right. I'll see you guys in the comments. Have a great day and peace.